right, so let's dive into, we're gonna, we're gonna split this up into different categories. All right, so we're gonna go over the different velocity banking options in terms of how you can use velocity banking, and I laid them right here. I think this is pretty obvious. So velocity banking can be used to pay off debt, specifically say bad debt, or any debt for that matter. Velocity banking can be used to pay off debt. Velocity banking can be used to leverage debt. So leverage can be a scary word sometimes. Leveraging involves risk. You can lose money, you can make money. So there is a risk. These levels down, risk. Paying off debt provides a guarantee. If I pay it off, I never have to worry about it ever again. If I leverage debt, that means I'm not trying to actually pay off the debt fast. What I'm trying to do is turn that debt into a income producing asset, one option. So if I'm looking to leverage a debt, that means that I want it to make me money in the long run. Typically that's real estate, could be um, some form of business like lending, okay? Um, let's see what else. It could also be things like um, in terms of if you have a business, like if you have a vehicle, you could leverage the debt of the vehicle, the interest you pay, the gas, the maintenance, the payment, the insurance. A lot of that could be written off if you have a business. If you do not, that car is a liability. We most likely want to get rid of it because the gain is that you get the cash flow. You no longer have to worry about the debt. Okay. So velocity banking can be used to pay off debt, can be used to leverage debt. Velocity banking can be used to invest. This is also risky, er, I would say. So meaning there are uh, uh, people, and I've, I've done this, I've played with this a little bit, okay, not too crazy. But uh, for example, I could take a 0% credit card Let's say it's uh, 15 months on purchases, right? And then the balance transfer. Let's say there's a 0% fee on balance transfers and 0% on the transfer, the, the actual amount that we're using, okay? So let's say you have a $25,000 credit limit on this credit card. Let's say it's a business credit card. Maybe it's a personal, could be either or. And typically, I would like to see an individual that's going to leverage debt to invest. I like to see good financials. You got good, solid income. Your expenses are less than what you bring in, right? You have minimal debt, not a whole lot of um, bad debt, not a whole lot of consumer debt, and you got plenty of cash flow to work with. You've got an emergency account, okay? You've got reserves, you've got good credit. I like to see good financials if we're gonna leverage debt. This lets me know that person is disciplined. If I see 2,000 a month, 1,900 they spend, they cash flow 100 bucks, and they're gonna try and leverage debt, and they've got a, you know, 57 grand of credit card debt, personal loans, student loans, a car loan, eh you know, I'm not too excited about this, right? But if we add a couple zeros to the equation, you know, let's say they're, I don't know, they spend, move the commas over, right? They're making 20 to, to 35K a month, right? Or more, and they're spending 
10 grand right a month so they got plenty of cash flow to work with or even if they're spending 19 grand they still got a good uh what is it they're making like say 25 to 35k good six to ten thousand plus in cash flow there's a lot to work with but i like to see good financials that's the only uh, uh main point i want to make this evening is having good 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 financials so let me Clear this up, all right? So let's say you're someone that's got good finances. You got your numbers in line. You know what you're doing. You know what your goals are. Let's say you're a huge enthusiast. You've studied a ton. Maybe you're even planning on getting a, a career in blockchain, okay? In the cryptocurrency market. Let's say that's your burning desire. You want to do this, okay? And maybe you don't have a whole lot of capital to work with, or maybe you have, say, 10 grand. Maybe we could leverage some of that credit that you have, combine, put it into, put it into some trades if you're knowledgeable in that. Or... Could we buy real estate? Is that an option? Could we buy real estate? Could we start a business? So what is this, what, what is the benefit of, of me doing this? Um, number one, I cut time down. The amount of time that it's gonna take me to save up the money to then go invest I get to shrink that time by leveraging zero cost debt. That's the whole purpose. If I'm gonna leverage debt, I want it to cost me nothing or I'm able to offset my cost, right? I've got a client that has multiple credit cards and what he'll do is he'll take multiple balance transfers out of multiple business credit cards and he does that Burr method that buy what is it buy rehab refinance repeat strategy that Burr strategy if you've never heard of it just type that in b-r-r-r-r -R 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 strategy and you'll find some good information so i got a client that does that he does not have the capital to take his cash to go buy real estate. So he spends his time building personal and business credit, establishes a business, gets access to cheap money, cheap debt, zero cost debt, and then acquires an income producing asset that then pays off the debt that he leveraged. Once he pays it off, he'll rinse and repeat. Use the same debt to acquire another income producing asset. So what ends up happening is that person time-wise goes a lot faster than somebody that spends their time just saving up their money and then coming to realize, ah, oh, crap, I need credit regardless if I wanna buy some real estate, right? So there's, there's um, a lot to be said here in terms of the different ways that we can uh, use velocity banking. But these are, I think these are the most popular ones. Maybe there's something that I'm missing here. Go ahead and comment if I'm missing something. But paying off debt is pretty straightforward. The objective, if I'm going to pay off debt, using velocity banking the objective is to use debt snowball as your measuring stick you cannot just say i'm going to do velocity banking because i saw some 25 year old kid talking about oh you know take a line of credit and boom 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 chunk here chunk there no we need to use debt snowball as our measuring stick what does that mean denzel Here's what it means. If I'm in the mindset 
of I want to be debt free. So that means we're going to exclude leveraging, we're going to exclude investing, exclude this offsetting costs and flipping, flopping, finessing and, you know, churning and all that stuff. If the mindset is I want to be debt free, I don't want to be bothered, leave me alone, I don't want to ever use debt, I want to avoid debt like the plague, okay. Velocity banking, debt snowball is your measuring stick. What do we have to do? Let's say uh, somebody is, let's do a little smaller number here. Let's say, uh, let's say you're cash flowing a thousand bucks a month. Okay, you're making uh, 4,500 a month. You spend 3,500 a month and you got 200 grand of debt. Okay, you got a mix of cars, student loan, a, a mortgage maybe, um, personal loans, credit cards, whatever it is. You take this thousand, you map out all your debts from smallest to highest, okay? Smallest balance to highest of the 200K or however much debt you have. You go in order, okay? So let's say you've got one credit card, 3K, another one you owe seven, another one you owe 10, then you got a $20,000 car, okay? And then you got a $50,000 student loan. That snowball, you start with your lowest debt, right? Whatever the monthly payment is, okay? Let's say these are your payments. You take that 50 bucks, your thousand, apply it towards the smallest debt. How long is it going to take you to pay off 3,000? Less than three months, okay? Then you jump. Now you got 1,050 cash flow. You go to the next, and then you go to the next, you go to the next, and you want to map out the timeline of how long is it going to take me to wipe out 200,000 with the amount of income that I have. Let's just say it's going to take us seven years. Let's just say. What are some ways that I can go faster? Please comment. If we're just doing debt snowball, what are some ways that I can go faster? Well, number one, I can reduce expenses. That would be smart, right? I can reduce expenses. I could try to work more hours, okay? Um, maybe I can change where I shop. If I go to Whole Foods, should I start going to maybe Publix? A little bit cheaper or if I shop at Publix should I go to Walmart okay a little bit cheap so really thinking on being very conscious of where every dollar goes yes so let's say you did that and maybe we're able to cut it down to six years right without really doing much in terms of not getting a second job or anything like that although you could could get a side hustle that's another way to speed up debt uh, your, your debt free timeline right that's cool and then you you get your timeline so let's say seven years was just based off the current numbers now what velocity banking when we measure velocity banking we have our, our timeline in order for velocity banking to even make sense we have to go faster than seven years based on the current numbers, not anything additional. Because anything additional outside of the numbers, you could do with both concepts, right? So if I'm doing velocity banking, I can also work more hours. If I'm doing velocity banking, I can also reduce my expenses. I can shop at different places. I can sign up to different memberships, get rewards, coupon, uh, you know, what is it? What's that thing called? Couponing. Um, group group on I can do all these things to save money reduce expenses increase cash flow increase income get a side hustle so take out all the outside stuff that we could do to improve the numbers just work with the current numbers your current income current expense current cash flow let's say it gets us debt free in seven years with that snowball let's just say that's the case velocity banking needs to do it in like 
five years, you know, maybe four. It needs to go significantly faster, right? If, if your timeline is 6.75 years, so let's say Death Snowball 7, Velocity Banking 6.75, not a big difference, couple months. So is it worth it? Maybe. I mean, it is 0.25 faster. But with Velocity Banking, you could have maybe run the numbers incorrectly or your credit is not good enough for the tools needed to enhance the numbers to make them better. What if Velocity Banking showed 7.5 years? Well, am I going to do Velocity Banking? No. Right? Is as fun as and exciting as it is, why would you why would you go longer? You, you go with what is faster. There are cases where velocity banking will make no sense because that snowball was our measuring stick. Okay, so I want to make that very clear. If we're just focusing on paying off debt, which on this channel is usually that vibe, most people want to get rid of their bad debt, consumer debt. They need to position themselves a little bit better, read a couple more books before they start trying to be the next, you know, uh, crypto millionaire or real estate investor. Everybody's a real estate investor now. Everybody's a crypto expert. Everybody's an expert. It's like, what's going on? Someone's got to be wrong, right? Somebody's got to be broke amongst all these so-called investors and crypto millionaires and blockchain experts and finance gurus somebody's got to be broke right out of the whole crowd am i am i on the right path here so we got to really think when we're looking at information we got to really think it through run the numbers if you if you spend 60 minutes a week to run your numbers it will change your life regardless of what concept you choose. It will change your whole entire life. 60 minutes. That's it. That's all I ask. 60 minutes a week, do a review on your numbers. Every time you get a paycheck, do a review. 60 minutes. It's not, it's not long. Anyone can do that. I don't care how busy you are. I don't care how many hours you work a week. 60 minutes. A week. 60 minutes bi-weekly, you'll, ch trust me, you'll change your life. If I'm just paying off debt, debt snowballs my measuring stick, seven years. If velocity banking, the numbers come out higher, it means one of two things. Either you ran the numbers incorrectly um, or the tools that you acquired were, were not effective. For example, if you applied for a personal line of credit for 10K and you got a 16% rate, but all of your debts are less than 16%, it's not going to make sense, okay? So the interest rate that you're using to leverage to pay off debt fast needs to be relatively close to what your interest rates are on your current debt or less. If it's less, it's almost a no-brainer. It's kind of like debt consolidation, right? Most people understand debt consolidation, right? If I have a debt, let's say I got a, a loan with Lending Club for 15 grand, and they're charging me 8% and I can get a PLOC at 10K at a 7% rating, it would make sense to reallocate what I owe of this 15 and put it into the PLOC and get charged 7%. That's debt consolidation. Where Velocity Banking comes in is simply taking all this income and dumping it into the line of credit and using it just like a checking account, right? 
where you can, where it's revolving, money goes in, money comes out, it speeds up the process because the way that 7% gets charged is on a daily rating. So if I dump 45 in the 10K, I'm getting charged 7% on say 5,000 as opposed to 10,000 for a certain amount of days and it keeps getting lower and lower, right? And then if you wanna get more slick, you add a credit card into the equation, 0% on purchases, run your bills, your, your, your consistent bills, your annual bills on a credit card, bills that can be paid with a credit card. You get one to 3% in cash back rewards. You don't have to worry about the bill for 15 months. You pay the monthly minimum payment. Uh-oh, I'm increasing your cash flow without actually reducing expenses. It, it was money you were gonna spend anyways, we just kind of pushed it out, which gives us time to recapture that 18%. Shift it to the seven, what ends up happening? I pay zero costs. I offset my costs to pay off debt, which goes faster than just using my worthless piece of dollars, right? My worthless fiat currency, I'm able to go a lot faster because I'm using banking products to my advantage as opposed to banking products being used against me, right? So here are the ways of doing velocity banking.